Year 13 A-level chemists, I know that organic synthesis can feel super, super overwhelming, especially when you're given one of those synthesis maps with everything already on it, all the functional groups, all the reagents, all the conditions, and you're thinking, how on earth am I going to remember all of these? Now, ultimately, you don't have to, okay? Don't look at that sheet and think that you have to learn it off by heart. Instead, what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can just build that map one step at a time, because ultimately that's all that matters. In your exam, right, when you're answering these questions and you're trying to figure out how to get from A to B, all you need to know is the previous step or the next step. So, let's build it from scratch. We're not going to include the reagents and conditions today, right? Those will be in individual functional group videos. We are going to show how, the, um, how they all link together. Okay, and we might come back at the end and actually name the types of reactions and mechanisms. Um, okay, let's start with the most basic, of course. Well, the most simple, not basic, you know what I mean. Um, so that's our alkanes, which are super, super unreactive. Those alkanes are so unreactive that we can either just burn them, but that's not organic synthesis, or we can carry out free radical substitution and turn those alkanes into, actually let's just call it an alkane, singular, and we can turn that into a halogeno alkane, aka halo alkane, depending on what you are reading. So I'm going to represent this as R. X, where R is just, you know, alkyl, the rest of the molecule, and X is your um, chloro, your bromo, your iodo. Now, this halogeno alkane, we've got a few different options because we know halogeno alkanes undergo nucleophilic substitution. And so, depending on which nucleophile we're using, that halogeno alkane we can convert into a nitrile. We can convert this halogeno alkane, oh, let's write, let's write it, a nitrile. We can turn this halogeno alkane into an amine. We can turn this halogeno alkane into an alcohol. These are all our nucleophilic substitution reactions, or we can also carry out elimination reactions and turn this halogeno alkane into an alkene. Let's see what these can turn into before so that we're extending out a nitrile once we've got this nitrogen here really all that it's going to become well actually no, we've got a couple of choices Ooh, the simplest one is we can just turn our nitrile into an amine okay so just by reduction so adding hydrogen but specifically notice we've added an extra carbon so our amine is going to have one more carbon in it than the original halogeno alkane that we started with we can also carry out hydrolysis reactions on this nitrile. And this is one that doesn't really show up officially in your AQA spec, but shows up in synthesis questions, so it's worth knowing. Hydrolysis of a nitrile will give us a carboxylic, oh, I forgot to name it, a carboxylic acid. Okay, um, from an amine, we can kind of leave it there for now. From a alcohol, we can, actually no, let's save alcohols. Let's go to alkenes. Alkenes, we know the only mechanism that we know for alkenes is electrophilic addition. So we're just going to add across the carbon-carbon double bond. To do that, we can either add HBr and give us back our halogeno alkane we can add sulfuric acid and then water and turn that alkene into an alcohol. Or if we were to add um, an actual halogen, so let's say Br2, we could turn it into a dihalogeno alkane. What's our final option? That's kind of it. But remember, alkenes can also form polymers because of this carbon-carbon double bond. So we can also form addition polymers. Okay, let's come back to our alcohol. Alcohols, we know that our typical reaction for these is we can either eliminate um, or carry out an elimination or a dehydration reaction to turn it into an alkene, 
or we can oxidize our alcohol. Depending on which type of alcohol we're starting with, we are going to oxidize that to, why have I gone lowercase all of a sudden? Are aldehydes less important? No, sorry, my bad. We can oxidize to an aldehyde, or we can oxidize to a ketone, depending on whether we're dealing with a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol. This aldehyde we know can undergo further oxidation to give us a, oh, hang on a second. Sorry, I love it when a plant comes together, to give us a carboxylic acid. Or if we just heat this alcohol, this primary alcohol under reflux with excess oxidizing agent, we can go from our alcohol directly to our carboxylic acid. This is starting to look really nice, oh my goodness. Now, aldehydes and ketones, they only undergo nucleophilic addition mechanisms. And one of those is with um, NABH4, so using the hydride ion in a reduction reaction where our aldehydes go back to primary alcohols and our ketones go back to secondary alcohols. But the other example that we look at is where our nucleophile is the cyanide ion, in which case we produce hydroxy nitriles. Okay, oh, have I put this carboxylic, I might, oh, okay. Now, if we come back to this carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid react with alcohols, of course, to give us esters. Oh no, oh no, it's fine. Right, to give us an ester, okay, if we react that carboxylic acid with an alcohol. But that's not the only way that we can produce an ester. We know that we can um, produce an ester much faster if instead of starting from a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, we instead use an, an acyl chloride, acyc, acyl chloride, or an acid anhydride. because here this reaction is irreversible and we can just carry it out at room temperature, whereas starting from a carboxylic acid, we need heat, we need a catalyst, all of that good stuff. Um, acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides, um, they undergo nucleophilic addition elimination reactions. So if the nucleophile was an alcohol, then of course we produce an ester, whereas we could also turn this acyl chloride into an amide if we were to react this with ammonia or an amine, what else could we turn this acyl chloride into? Oh, well, if we added water, we could turn the acyl chloride back, whoa, into a carboxylic acid. I'm gonna get out of the way, I, li I think that's it. I think that's it, that's not that much. How long, I'm not even wearing a watch. How long did that take us? You're gonna to have to tell me, I'm gonna to have to look at the time afterwards. Not that long. Now we have got our aromatic ones as well, but before we get to aromatic, let's make sure that we know, not the reagents and conditions for all of these right now, but the names of the types of reactions um, or mechanisms. So, from an alkane, actually let's go, let's go green. I don't know, I like green. From, al from an alkane to a halogeno alkane, that is your free radical substitution. Most of your halogeno alkane reactions are nucleophilic substitution. So we're just swapping the X for whatever nucleophile. Oh no, we started with. But of course, in order to get an alkene, the only reaction, the only mechanism rather for that is our elimination. Once we've got from our nitrile to try and get to an amine, we're just adding essentially hydrogen. So that is a reduction reaction. To get from a nitrile to a carboxylic acid, that is called hydrolysis. Okay, I hope you're doing these along with me so that I'm not doing this by myself. Okay, now where are we? Let's go to alkene. Alkenes, we know, electrophilic addition. Okay, alcohol to alkene. Again, the only way we can get an alkene is through an elimination mechanism. Now, again, 
the type of reaction you'll see called a dehydration reaction, but the type of the mechanism is an elimination mechanism. So there's a difference, right? Um, Dihalogenoalkane, also electrophilic addition. Now, if we come down to our alcohol, alcohol to aldehyde, alcohol to ketone, alcohol to carboxylic acid, these are all oxidations. So I'm just gonna put our O in square brackets. Whoa. Aldehyde or ketones back to alcohols. That Those are both reduction reactions, but the name of the mechanism is nucleophilic addition, right, with our H minus nucleophile. Aldehydes to ketones, again, it's an aldehyde or a ketone. The only mechanism, again, is nucleophilic addition. Where are we? Carboxylic acid and alcohol to ester. What kind of, me I mean, we don't really learn a mechanism for this. It's technically a condensation reaction or an esterification reaction. Should we label it? Yeah, sure. Esterification. That's not the mechanism. That's the reaction type. Acyl chloride to an acid anhydride to an ester using an alcohol. These are all nucleophilic addition, elimination, nucleophilic addition, elimination. Last arrow. Oh no, let's put it over here. Nucleophilic addition. Elimination. Isn't this beautiful? That didn't even take us that long. And this is not even though it's beautiful for me, okay, this might not be the neatest thing that you've ever seen, but that's not the point. The point is, this is a great revision tool. So, when you're revising your organic synthesis, start with a blank piece of paper or a blank whiteboard or a blank page on your tablet or whatever you're using. Start from any functional group and then just build it out. And then you will just start to remember, just through practice and application, how all of these different groups link together. Um, I think aromatic needs its own video. So watch this space because I make sure that you have liked this video, commented, and subscribed, there we go, there's the three, so that you can see when I post that one as well. Yay, bye.